Hello, everyone. Uh, in today's session, I want to talk about asynchronous operations in OData v4, uh, and I will talk it, talk about it in the context of SAP CAP. Uh, so in OData v4, uh, they added explicit support for asynchronous operations. And the way it works, I mean, you can do it in a couple of ways, uh, but the preferred approach is uh, you supply the header, uh, the prefer header, uh, so you uh, you have the value respond async. Uh, so the clients can tell the server uh, to process the request asynchronously. And what the server can do is uh, it can accept the asynchronous request and it can immediately respond back uh, with a 202 accepted uh, status code. Uh, and along with the status code, along with the response, uh, it also provides the location header and uh, there is the value associated with the location header. And this location header, uh, this contains the URL URL, and the client can check back uh, using this location header uh, the status of the operation. Uh, so it can constantly poll and find out uh, whether the operation has completed or not. And once the operation has completed, uh, then the uh, server will say that it is complete. Uh, so the workflow looks something like this. Uh, so here you have the request. Uh, so this is going to be an asynchronous request. And you can see that we are passing in the prefer respond async. Uh, so the client is uh, saying, hey, I want you to respond in an asynchronous manner. Uh, and as soon as the client sends this request, uh, the server is going to reply back with a 202 accepted. And along with the 202 accepted, uh, there is also going to be the location header. And this location header, uh, the client can constantly poll uh, to see if the operation has completed or not. Uh, and there is no body in it. Uh, the content length you can see uh, is uh, zero right here. Uh, then what the client can do is uh, like uh, they can constantly pull this uh, URL uh, that was uh, supplied in the location header uh, and uh, at some, and the server will respond back with a 200 OK uh, telling the uh, status of uh, the operation. Uh, so the status can be in progress uh, and so on, right? Uh, so in this case, uh, it has already completed, uh, but it can also come back with in progress or so. Okay, so let's uh, see this in action. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I have a very simple SAP CAP application. Uh, so here I have a very simple SAP CAP application. Uh, if I go into my schema.cds, uh, I have a single entity. And this single entity uh, is uh, so that I can have uh, the status stored in this uh, entity. Uh, so I'm going to store the status. And uh, this is uh, like when the client is polling, I'm going to go ahead and read the status from this uh, entity and give it to the user. Uh, and uh, in my demo service.cds file, I'm going to go ahead and expose this as an OData service uh, so that the client can uh, ask for the status. And uh, this is my async operation, my action that is, let's assume that this takes like a minute or so for it to complete. Uh, so this is my action itself. Um, now in my demo service.js file, uh, of course I have to uh, do the handling myself. Uh, so this is the action right here. And this is the function that needs to be run uh, when that action is called. Now we want this action to be asynchronous, right? Uh, so what we are going to do is um, if the header does not have respond async, uh, like it needs to have the prefer header uh, with the value respond async. Uh, if it does not have it, uh, then we just say that the synchronous processing is not supported. So we respond back with the synchronous processing not supported. Uh, but let's assume that the client uh, is asking us to do uh, it asynchronously. Uh, then we respond immediately back uh, with the 202. Uh, we also provide the location header uh, and then we send this to the end user. Now the location header uh, is going to have the action status uh, and it's going to have the ID in it. Uh, so this is the entity that we have in our schema.cds file. Uh, and we are going to use this to uh, give the status uh, to the end user. Uh, now the operation itself, uh, this is uh, just uh, uh, at set timeout. It's going to take like a uh, one minute for it to complete. Uh, and once it completes, let's assume that it's a long running operation. It completes, uh, I'm going to update the action status field with the status uh, completed. Uh, and I'm going to reply back with the action completed successfully. But basically, we are just updating this entity because um, uh, this is not going to go back to the uh, client anyways. 
Okay, so now um, um, what we also do uh, is uh, we set the, um, because this is going to take one minute to complete, uh, and Node.js will start this, will trigger this, uh, come to the next line. Uh, we are going to insert into our action status uh, saying that uh, the status is in progress. And then we are going to reply back to the user saying, hey, this is the location header, keep checking constantly. Okay, so if I run this, uh, it's fairly straightforward. Uh, so let me go ahead and run this application. Uh, and I have my request.http file. Uh, so here I can send in a request. Um, and in my request, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and uh, put some value for the ID. Uh, I'm going to send the request uh, with the preferred respond async. Uh, so when I click on it, uh, so it's uh, going to immediately give me back uh, this uh, URL. Uh, so I'm going to take this URL right here. Uh, I, I, I can take the entire thing, but I already have the entire thing. So just the GUID should be enough. Uh, so I put in the GUID right here. Uh, I send the request. Uh, you can see that it is in progress uh, because we know that it's going to take one minute for it to come. Complete. Uh, so I can constantly keep asking uh, what is the status of uh, the request. Uh, so it's uh, going to give me 200 OK, uh, but the status is still in progress. Uh, so at some stage, uh, I, uh, it should uh, change into completed state. Uh, because once the one minute is uh, over, uh, this should uh, go into the completed state. OK, a minute is up, I think. Uh, so let me go ahead and send the request again. Uh, sure enough, uh, it is in the completed state. Uh, so that's how you would do it. Uh, fairly straightforward. Uh, so the client can send in this header uh, respond async uh, with the uh, preferred keyword. Uh, and then the server can act uh, uh, accordingly. Now, uh, uh, do we have uh, asynchronous support in OData v2? Uh, the answer is uh, natively, uh, we don't have uh, support for uh, asynchronous operation in OData v2. Uh, this was uh, built in into OData v4 protocol. Uh, but that doesn't mean that we cannot do it in OData v2. Uh, we just have to do it a little bit ourselves. Uh, and we can uh, we can accomplish the same thing as you do with uh, OData v4. Uh, it's just that. Uh, you need to do you need to do some manual uh, coding as well, uh, but otherwise in OData v4 uh, we have uh, the asynchronous uh, uh, way of uh, calling uh, any long running application. Okay, thank you. Bye.